Hey guys, so in this video, we're gonna run through how to build the browse abandonment flow. But not only that, we're also gonna run through some of the major pitfalls that we see brands make with the flow and what we actually want to do and how we wanna structure the flow to maximize the revenue and also not piss people off. Now, this is often one of the top three to five flows for our clients especially those in the apparel, health, and wellness space. Now, this flow is for people who are on your list who visit your site, they visit a certain product page, but they just take no further action. And just like every email we send, it's super important to actually consider people's level of intent here. They aren't quite as interested as someone who's added to cart or who's initiated checkout, but it's still a degree of interest. They've visited your site, they've maybe even checked out a couple of products, and based on what they saw, they decided not to add to cart or to go any further. Now, typically it's because they weren't convinced that they could trust you or the product just wasn't for them. What we want to do is address those objections. And what I recommend doing is using this flow as a bit of a softer touch point. You don't want to bombard people here, but since people have checked out a product page, our goal is really just to get them back to the site, add to cart, and then to purchase. We don't need them to buy on the spot right away. We just kind of want to get them further along the funnel. So let's dive in. I'll show you exactly how we build it out for our clients and how you can too. Okay, so what do you need? Okay, so the first thing that you need is to make sure you connect and make sure that this little button here, the ad viewed product tracking to my site is checked on. Now you should be able to go in here and see, it's just at the very bottom left here. You click on the bottom left and then you click on integrations and then you go to Shopify, right? So we're in Shopify integrations and then this is the first thing that pops up. Just make sure this is checked on. That's number one. And then if you're just checking it on, make sure you go to the bottom right here and say update settings. Now I've already done this, so I'm not gonna click that button. So so the next thing you have to do is just make sure it's actually tracking properly. So sometimes there's issues with the theme. There's sometimes just issues where it doesn't populate properly. So we want to make sure this is actually showing up properly, right? So where we go then is to analytics, to metrics, to view product, and then you look at the feed. So you go in here, you go to analytics, you go to metrics, so go in here. And then basically what we want to do is just find that view product. So it makes sure you, you scroll and sometimes there might be a lot on here. So you need to go to the next page, go to view product. And then what it's going to show, obviously this this is not a active account. So if you look at the last 90 days, you can then see, okay, like viewed product has actually fired, right? So it's working. And again, if people are actually doing this thing, it, the site was live and it was working, and then this would also be firing, right? So that's an easy way to check. The other way you can kind of check is just look at your activity feed as well. You can just check on and see if there's certain people who are doing certain, basically like doing that activity, right? Viewing product, right? So that's the next step. Now, if it's not working, you need to install a code. And this is relatively easy to do. They actually changed this relatively recently, all you need to do is you go to bottom left, go to integrations. So again, I'll go down here and I'll show you. This is the screen we're looking for. So you go to bottom, the bottom left here, you go to integrations, you go to manage sources, set up web tracking, and then you're going to, it's going to pop up here and it's going to say, okay, like this is obviously already set up here. So it's going to say it's enabled on your Shopify store. If it's not enabled, you just need to click this button. What it's going to do is it's going to take you to a page that looks kind of like this. So it's going to take you to the homepage and it's going to have a little button on the left-hand side, right? And let me move my my face so you can see there we go on the left hand side right there so you're just going to want to make sure that's toggled on it's toggled off toggle it on and then save right and again the save button is right up here for your thing so that's the initial step, right? That's the first thing you got to do. So the next piece is just looking at the flow breakdown. So you've got that initial piece set up. That's the, I mean, that's really important to set up that so we can actually set up the, the trigger properly. Now, the next piece is to just look at like, what does this actually contain? So what this contains is basically, it's going to be four different emails, potentially four different emails. Now, the first thing we want to look at is the flow filters, right? So we have add to cart zero times, checkout started zero times, placed order zero times, and has not been in the flow in the last 30 days. Now, the trigger is when someone viewed product, right? And assuming you went through this process back here, this should be set up for you. Basically, we, we tag a lot of our campaigns or a lot of our flows with this and a lot of our profiles, I should say, with this glued from campaigns just in case they're in these flows and they're also getting campaigns. We want to make sure they're not getting both the same, the exact same mode, right? Now, that can also be kind of solved with uh, smart sending campaigns, but nonetheless. The first thing we have is a reminder or like an indecision email. We wait a day. We then have a bestseller and reviews, right? And then we wait a day. 
day. And again, going back to the first thing here, like think about what people's level of awareness is and think about where people are at in their buying journey. So they're typically, if we get them into a browse amendment flow, they've obviously viewed a product. They might not be exactly sure what they want, right? They might've checked out a couple of different products. And what we want to do here is help with that indecision. So that's why we're kind of just kind of number one, reminding them. And number two, showing them some best sellers and showing them some reviews of that best, those best sellers that might help with the decision making process. Wait a day. The next piece is a conditional split. So this is basically for people who have purchased in the past, we're just going to remove them and people who have not purchased in the past. Again, it depends on how aggressive you want to be here. We may send another reminder and then an incentive to purchase in the first place as well. Again, though, like these people are not super high intense. So we typically will go a little softer and have like a two or three at the very most. Again, this is a little bit softer, right? It's browse abandonment. It's not abandoned cart, etc. Now, how do you actually build this out? So we went over the trigger. We went over the filter. The big thing you want to look at is the dynamic elements, right? And what I would recommend doing here is just keeping them from the Klaviyo template. So how you do that, you go in here. Um, let me go to this and go to the flows. You go to create flow and we're doing browse abandonment. So we're going to go, oh, it was already there because I was searching for it. I uh, go to browse abandonment. It's going to walk you through this. Select tags. If you have, it's already selecting the trigger for you, right? And then, and it's just giving me a warning here. You haven't received any of these events for a while. We know that, right? Just keep an eye on that. If, if your store is active, you shouldn't get those notifications, right? And then the next piece here is you, you look at the trigger. It's already set up here for you. So triggered with the product, the flow filters, right? Again, those are set up here. You can add the additional ones if there are any additional ones there. And then you can kind of keep this, right? Typically what we're going to do, uh, and this you can get into with the split testing section is we're going to split test timing of this. So we might do a 30 minute, we might do a two hour, we might do a four hour. So split test the timing on that. Uh, and then what we want to do is just look at the actual email itself. So this is really important as well, because since someone is uh, was browsing for something, we want to display the same thing they were browsing for, right? So we go in here, edit email, and I'll show you how this kind of populates within the email and within the email template. It's going to show you this, right? So it's going to show you basically these are, it's a dynamic image, dynamic event name, which would be like product name, and then dynamic price. Again, I wouldn't try to reinvent the wheel here. I would just take this and duplicate it and then tweak this as needed. You can change the format slightly. You can change like how things are showing up. If there's a dollar sign, if there's uh, decimals or anything like that, you can change that. But what I would recommend is just keeping this as the basic code and then tweaking as you need, right? Just saves a little bit of time, saves a little bit of effort there and uh, leaves less room for error. So that's essentially how you go about building the browse abandonment flow. Again, I hope this video helped.